DJ, congratulations on uh, another impressive victory night. I got to ask you, I mean, with all the history, everything that happened, all, all this things have done, how personally satisfying is this victory for you tonight? Oh, it's good, man. No matter who it is, you know, getting out there and getting your hand raised is very satisfying. So, yeah, but a little extra, you know, a little extra back there, just kind of, it's done. Close that chapter. You know, it was obvious after you heard him the first time that he never really fully recovered, but, I mean, he was in there for a while, and you were going mm -hmm. full speed for quite a long time. I mean, was there ever any part of your head that said, I got to back off the throttle a little bit, you know, we could be going two, three, four, five? I'm in too good a shape to let off the throttle, you know. Uh, he's not going to be able to recover. I'm going to be able to push the pace always. I mean, I think that's my fighting style is that I'm always going to bring it. I'm going to push the pace as hard as I possibly can all the time. And before this fight this week, I mean, you said, you know, you'd be interested in going down to 125 and, and facing Mighty Mouse. Um, now that Mighty Mouse lost, I mean, does going to 125 to face a Henry Cejudo have that same excitement for you? Or was it something about, you know, the, the, the legendary Mighty Mouse? That's whatever's going to get me to the best pound for pound fighter in the world. You know, I believe I am that guy. So whatever that biggest challenge is, let's bring it. So Hudo mentioned, too, that he'd like to come up to 135. Yeah. Does that entertain you, or is it, would it be more about, you know, getting that second belt? You know, I don't really think the guy uh, would deserve it. You know, I mean, he's still got – I mean, Joseph Benavidez, Benavidez – sorry, Benavidez just beat him, you know. Um, yeah, he lost a split decision to – Pettis, but I didn't agree with that loss, you know. So, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of stuff there. And he's got possibly a trilogy with uh, Mighty Mouse. So, I don't know. I, I'm open for whatever, though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not stepping away from a challenge, that's for sure. And last thing for me, I mean, the name that I think a lot of people are throwing out is Dominic Cruz. I mean, yeah. there's history there. Of course. He's getting healthy. Is that something that appeals to you right now? First things first, I can't wait to go home, have a staycation, you know, enjoy my house out in Colorado, get on the lake, jump on my boat, uh, enjoy uh, my son and my wife. So that's, that's the first thing. We'll figure it out with the team. Shoot, man, uh, why don't we bring on Brock Lesnar? <laughs> Stipe's looking for a fight. You got any interest? <laughs> How much did your eye, if any, affect you? You know, because it closed up ver fairly early when he landed that right hand. Did it affect you at all? And did you have any sense of urgency because of it? No, not because of the, the eye. Um, I did feel the eye, though, right away. Um, but I can get flicked by someone, and for whatever reason, I bruise, I cut easy. You know, this bone structure just uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't do very well. It's like GSP. You know, you hit him with anything, he's going to get bruised. Do you feel like, you know, Cody seems like, you know, he has such intense dislike for you, and the fact that does that work against him? Like, you know, if you're so angry that it takes up some oxygen and maybe works against you, where, you know, if you're a little more relaxed, you were almost taunting him, so you're more relaxed and he's angry. Do you think that worked against him in, in a way? I don't think, I don't think that had to play a factor with anything. I think just he has some technical problems that he needs to fix, and I don't, I really don't believe he's got a chin. You know, he plays a dangerous game. He likes to get in there and slug it. You know, I worked a lot with my boxing in this camp. I worked with Joel Diaz's uh, gym out in Indio. I did a lot of boxing, tried to sit on my punches a lot. Worked a lot, worked a lot with Dwayne on that right hook when uh, Cody was coming in. We were planning on him throwing a right hand. And every time he throws his right hand, he drops his left. You know, he's looking to throw a left hook. He's fast, right? He throws a big right, left hand, but he drops it to his pocket. So we were just planning on timing it. Um, I got a great coach that uh, game plans with me and just timing that as he comes in and uh, kind of let some of the technique go out the window and just be mean, you know? I was going to ask you about his chin. Did you have any occasion, like, did you find from sparring with him, like, did you say, hey, <coughs> this guy has a weak chin, or was it just when you fought him in, in the fights? Oh, when I fought him my last fight, wasn't wasn't anything in sparring. Um, you know, Cody was coming into the team as I was leaving, so we didn't really get to work out as much as – has been like in the media, you know. Um, it was more when I hit him in that first fight with my foot and I, I dropped him with that left kick. I didn't feel like that left kick had anything on it, you know, but uh, it affected him. TJ, congratulations. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, um, I know, uh, you know, when you get off this boat on your vacation, you're probably going to start thinking about that next opponent. And the yeah. thing is, is that, you know, Henry Cejudo, I think, has a pretty good chance to really capture a pretty large fan base. Yeah. And the fact that you both, you know, are from Southern California, is that. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, don't you think about the finances of the fight now, considering where you are, and is he the more attractive opponent than Cruz at this point, potentially? <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see how it all comes together. You know, that's absolutely something you go through your head. Um, I want to be a sportsman. You know, I want to uh, continue to just be the baddest man I can. But, uh, yeah, man, that definitely goes through your head on who you're going to fight and who's going to cause the most attention. So, uh, I'm up for, like I said, I'm up for whatever challenge, bring it. You were, uh, you were lighting him up at the, in that finishing sequence. At any point were you like, hey, Herb, can we, can we finish this? Because it seemed like he was getting uh, messed up pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't recovered from the, f the first drop, you know, and he got back to his feet. Uh, but I wasn't going to let off. There's no way. I mean, 
I, I'm too mean. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go until I win." And uh, I didn't have a problem giving him a little extra too. <laughs> you know, that knee was definitely a, a pretty hard knee. I felt that one, and it, that one finished him off. You guys had a, a little bit of a meeting in, in the cage afterward. Do, do you remember what you said to him, or what, if he said anything to you? No, I just gave him a hug. You know, I got respect, you know. I mean, it takes a lot to get where we're at. You know, this is a tough game. This is a, a crazy life we live. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of eyes, you know. He uh, he worked his butt off, so, you know, respect. He went out there and did it. Do you think this is finally over between the two of you, this this whole this whole feud, this whole rivalry? I said I was going to ruin his career at 35s. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to stay. I'm the king at 135s. I don't plan on seeing him again. Last thing for me, were you surprised that Cejudo beat beat Johnson? And I don't know how much or any of that you that you could watch, but w were you surprised? <clears throat> I watched a little bit of it. It was hard. You know, I was getting ready. Uh, you know, hitting mitts with with Dwayne and getting ready back there. But I, I saw a little bit of it here and there, and it. it I don't know. It didn't look like the same Demetrius Johnson, you know. Um, Sudo looked good, and I, I knew that Sudo was gonna be a better fighter coming in the second time. He looked good against Joseph, but Joseph was able to uh, to get that victory. Um, but he was a, was a better fighter, you know. Um, he came out and used his wrestling, got on top. But I don't know. It kind of seemed like a little bit of a lackluster fight, you know. I didn't seem like the same Demetrius Johnson. And you still didn't get to show off that jujitsu yet that you were talking yeah. about, TJ. But. I know. I was talking about that with my coach uh, after I dropped him the first time, and I had like that. Backside control. I should have put the hooks in, but you know I was too happy uh, punching him. Well, that's I mean two times in a row you finish him emphatically and violently after taking his best shot. You had your time where you had to be patient and wait your turn. You could argue that you beat Dominic Cruz. Very close fight there. Dana said you're in the conversation and very much in the running to talk about being the best champion ever in this division. Yeah. And you talked about being pound for pound best in the world. Absolutely. What do those things mean to you right now after that humility and, the, and that time you had to spend after the cruise fight to get back to the top of the mountain? Uh, sounds great, man. You know, I worked my butt off to be here. Um, I didn't take, I always fought the best. I always fought the toughest guys. You know, when I lost that decision that I didn't agree with, I was fighting the number one contenders, you know, John Lineker, Asensio, I was going through the tough guys and beating them, beating them handily, you know, so um, I should be on a 14 fight win streak, you know, I should be defending my belt, I don't even know how many times right now, you know, but uh, absolutely, I, I agree with that. TJ, my congratulations. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I have two questions. First, first one, uh, you looked very, very confident at the o confident on, on the open workout and the conference and the before the fight where this confidence coming from? And the second question is what you were doing different in this fight comparing to the first one? <clears throat> the confidence comes from how hard I train. And I, I train I train harder and smarter than anybody out here. You know, I have uh, the training lab in Anaheim, California with uh, Sam Calavita that pushes me to the extreme. Um, not only how hard we go, but the science behind it. You know, the guy's a very smart guy and that's why I decided to move myself down there. As well as I have the greatest coach in the world, you know, Dwayne Ludwig. Uh, not only how great he is, but he's willing to sacrifice and travel out and, and travel every week to train with me. You know, um, so I have the best team in the world. I got Juan Archuleta pushing me. I got Cub Swanson. We have a great gym, the training lab. Um, and what I did differently is that I completely tried to switch it up on him. I can be a different fighter every fight. You know, I knew he thought I was going to move my feet, throw a lot of kicks, and and you all use all this flashy stuff. But instead, I kind of waited for him to rush me and met him with his right hand, beat him at his own game. I knew he was going to drop his left, and uh, it happened. Hey, TJ, uh, you and Dominic Cruz obviously won in 1A. It's inexplicably linked it seemingly for the rest of your careers. Now, tonight you came out, and you know I'm the best 135-pounder best one, there ever was. Arguably have that fight that should have gone your way. But for those listening, what do you feel like establishes you as the best ahead of Dominic? Where do you think you're a step ahead in that avenue? I keep fighting. I'm not on the couch. I'm not behind the desk hurt. I'm out here fighting, I'm performing, I'm fighting the best in the world. Anybody else? We're good? Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you.